So this is Dr. Edu, and I welcome you to this very last system we want to consider. So this will be part eight of my series for the game access course. The last system we want to consider is on the integumentary system. So we are looking at the basic skin parts and functions. So if you look at this very beautiful picture, you have the epidermis, the dermis, and hypodermis. So epi means above, okay, or on top. So it is on top of the dermis, and that's the dermis. And hypo means below. And you can see coming out of the skin are these projections, which are actually hair follicles, okay? So you see hair on the skin, and that is the root of the skin within the dermis. We also have several layers of cells we'll be looking at in the epidermis. Then also there are some cells within the dermis and blood vessels as well. That is a sweat gland. So the sweat is manufactured in the gland here to pass through the duct and then come to the surface. So when you are sweating, the sweat is actually coming from a manufacturing center to pass through a duct and then come to the surface, right? Then you also have some cutaneous blood vessels there, which also help with temperature regulation and also nourishing the cells within the skin. So for the skin and the pillow sebaceous apparatus, as we describe it, will be made up of the arachta pili muscle, which will be this as a muscle, and it's connected to the hair. So the muscle and the hair, and also the sebaceous gland, the oil-secreting gland, sebaceous gland, together will form the pillow sebaceous apparatus. Now, when the muscle contracts, it causes the hair to stand on end, thereby trapping a lot of air and insulating the body against excessive heat loss. And you realize that in a very cold weather, you start seeing goose pimples okay, on the skin because of these contractions of the muscle. They contract so much that you start seeing some dots on the skin, what we usually describe as the goose pimples. But when the body does not need too much heat, so what I've described is when the body needs to conserve heat because there's too much, you know, cold, and the body needs to homeostatically balance okay the temperature regulate the temperature when in a very uh, hot weather or uh, a place that is uh, too hot let me put it that way the muscles here that's the erector pillar muscle will relax once it relaxes the hair will fall on the skin and so it is not going to trap much air all right so that air can easily blow on top of the skin and then allow the heat to what permeate heat within the system, especially in the blood vessel, because the blood vessels contain blood that is coming from within the body. So it, it has some warmth, okay? It is warmer. And there's also what we call the vasodilations. So vasodilation will occur to allow more blood from within to come to the surface and therefore air also blows and then the heat is you know taken away from the body all right so if there is heat conservation you need to conserve heat apart from the erector pillar muscles contracting for the hair to stand on end and to trap air you also have vasoconstriction so the vessels become constricted to rather conserve 
the warm blood that is within the system from coming out towards the surface of the skin. Okay, so it's as simple as that. That's the way the skin serves as a thermoregulatory organ. Also, it protects the body from external hazards. So you have um, it set as a boundary against the microorganisms entering the, the body, also UV light and all that mechanical abrasion and what have you. So we say that the skin has a coating called keratin to help protect the skin from abrasion and other, you know, uh, external forces. So it is stratified, it has a lot of layers to protect it so that the part below the skin is well protected. You also have this fat or the hypodermis there, which also helps in cushioning and insulation as well. So for skin to be classified as thick or thin, it will depend on the number of layers that it has in the epidermis. So what is a thick skin? A thick skin is the kind of skin you see in your palm and then the sole of your feet. So you just look at your palm and you realize that it has a thicker layer than the back of your hand. Okay, so the back of your hand will have thin skin. Then within the palm is thick. And also the other parts of the skin, like the rest of the skin on your upper limb, lower limbs, your back, are all thin skin. So the thin skin will have these layers in the epidermis. So we are looking at just this epidermis and the layers. So you have on top of it, most superficial, the stratum corneum, which will contain a lot of keratin. Okay, dead cells, as you can see, these ones don't even have nuclei. So they will lose their nuclei. Then sometimes they are sloughed off and then replaced by cells that are coming from below. So from the stratum corneum, we go to stratum granulosum. Granulosum because it contains granules. We also have the stratum spinosum, also spinosum because it looks like spines. Then you have the stratum basale, because it is at the base, and that is the regenerative capacity of the skin is able to mitotically, you know, produce new cells that will move to the top. The stratum spinosum also has some ability to divide. Then you have cells within the epidermis like the longer hands cells you also have the melanocytes which will secrete the pigment within these uh, melanosomes okay you know, the pig uh, the melanin the pigment melanin is produced by the melanocytes so basically for a thin skin this would be the layers. How about the thick skin? The thick skin will just have an extra layer known as a stratum lucidium. So you can see that there was no stratum lucidium here. We have stratum lucidium there. In, an, in addition, the keratin, the stratum corneum will be thicker than that of a thin skin. So these are the two major ways you can differentiate between a thick skin and a thin skin. Beyond that, you see that the stratum granulosum is also the stratum spinosum, stratum basal, that's the melanocytes. Another one is here. And then you also have keratinocytes, and then you have the longer hand cells, right? So we just want to brush the surface and not to go into too much details. So basically, this is how the structure of the skin is. And I hope you have learned something. Thank you very much. And I wish you the very best.